A Story for Bear Written by Dennis Hazley Illustrated by Jim LaMarche Narrated by me One day a young bear was nosing through the bushes when he saw something lying on the ground. He looked at it with curiosity. He sniffed at its tiny marks. Then the bear took it in his teeth and brought it back to his cave. Through the years the bear looked at the paper with wonder. It seemed as far away and mysterious as the moon. One summer afternoon the bear ranged farther than usual from where he lived. He followed a scent until he came to a clearing, and there he saw several strange things all at once. There was a cabin, and brightly colored laundry hanging on a line, and a woman. From behind the thick tree he watched as the woman sat down and opened a mysterious square thing she was carrying. His nose tickled from the wonderful smells of the cabin, bacon and coffee and bread. But he gazed only at her, trying to understand what she was doing as she held the book. He felt calm as he watched her. When she closed the book, he ran away. Day after day he returned. He managed to get closer to her and watched from behind a near tree, his thick bare head just peeking around. He had never seen anything like this. Sometimes, as she gazed at the book, she laughed out loud. Other times, she lowered it and looked away, but without really seeing anything, he thought. Still other times, she appeared afraid and held it tightly. And once, when the sun slanted through the trees, he saw her place it gently on her lap and close her eyes. Later, she went into the cabin and he lumbered slowly through the woods back to his cave. When he heard a blue jay call, he looked up quickly because he thought for a moment it was the woman laughing. One afternoon the woman was not in her yard. Slowly, his head moving from side to side, he walked toward her things. With one big paw, he knocked a book off the pile to land face down in the dirt. He pushed it with his nose and scratched at its brown cover with his claws trying to turn it over. Finally, one of his claws caught under the cover and the book flipped over, opened. The bear moved his nose forward, then it closed again, and his head snapped back. Once more he tried, this time it stayed open. He took two lumbering steps toward it and put his big head close. There on the page were row after row of marks, tiny marks, like those on the piece of paper in his cave. He stared at them, while his nose filled with the scents of paper, glue, ink, and her touch. He didn't see the woman walking up behind him. When he finally heard her, his head swung around. For a moment their eyes locked. The bear pawed once more at the book, then turned and ran away. The next day he saw the woman sitting in her chair, the book with the brown cover on her lap. She was looking into the trees, searching for something. When she finally saw him, she smiled. Come here, come here, bear. After a while he moved out from the tree, and then slowly he took a few steps toward her, with his big head swaying from side to side. When he grew near to her, but not so near that he couldn't run, he lay down and looked up at her. She waited a moment longer, then she carefully opened the book, and softly she began to speak. There was once a sailor, she read, who had to travel for many years over the sea before he could return home. The bear gazed up at her as she said the words and turned the pages. He couldn't understand any of what she was saying, but as he listened to the sound of her voice, happiness washed over him like waves. He returned day after day all that summer. When she read in a fearful voice about the sailor getting lost, 
he felt afraid. When she laughed at how the sailor played tricks, the bear would feel strangely happy. When she read of his love, the bear looked at the woman with wide eyes and watched as her gentle mouth formed the words. All the words she read made a story, a story for her bear. Whenever she read, he felt the waves of mysterious feelings carried by her voice. Sometimes her voice was soothing, and the bear grew peaceful. And sometimes she sounded excited or scared, and his hair bristled, and he gave a low growl. And sometimes her sounds were tender, and he looked up at her and watched her fingers gently lifting a page and a page and a page. These feelings often stayed inside of him as he lumbered back to his world at the end of the day, and sometimes in the babbling of a brook he would think he heard her again and become quite happy. One afternoon, when he returned to the cabin, there was a chill in the air. She put down her book, looked at the bear, and said, I wish... Oh, I wish you could read these books when I'm away for the winter. Then she smiled at him, and the bear, seeing her smile, felt lightness in his heart, and she began to read aloud again. When next he came, he was carrying something in his mouth. It was a scrap of paper from his cave with its mysterious marks. He laid it by her books. Bear, she said. He knew by now that this was her word for him, and he lifted his head. Bear, did you bring this for me? And then she read it in her gentle voice, as if it were a story he was giving to her. Dear Eliza, your father and I have been cheered by your letter. We picture you often living near the woods where we summered. I remember days of berry picking and golden light shining through the tall trees. When the bear next returned, the leaves were changing color. When he reached the cabin, he saw what had changed there as well. She was not in her usual place waiting for him. The bear walked into her yard, taking a few steps and moving his big head from side to side. He walked this way up to where her chair had been. There under the tree where she usually sat were her books. There were many of them, more than he'd ever seen, lying on a cloth, fallen leaves and pine cones on their covers. She had left them for him, along with a piece of paper, as if she wished he would read it. For my bear. He looked at what she'd left him with his big head close. He understood that she had gone as silence surrounded him. Then tenderly, as tenderly as he could, he put his teeth around the book with the brown cover and carried it away. All that afternoon he made the long journey from his winter cave to her yard and back again through the forest, carrying her books with their covers of green and red and black, their words of sailors and goddesses and far-off lands, while the stream whispered and the blue jays called, that night, as the moon rose like a white page with mysterious marks, he lay among the hard covers of her books. Finally he slept. And while he slept, he heard her voice, gentle and near. She was telling him a tale of adventure and magic and love. And all that winter, before she came back in the spring, whenever he put his nose to the pages or touched the covers with his claws, she was there reading to him. The End